Vielen Dank, dass Sie sich die Zeit genommen haben. Das ist alles, was ich auf Deutsch sagen kann. And I'm told, thank you. I'm, I'm told that my Canadian accent plus German equals Dutch. So, I'm sorry if I said that with a Dutch accent. Um, so, I'm changing the topic. Originally, we were going to talk about the customer experience, making things more simple. And last night, uh, our very kind and flexible hosts agreed to allow me to change to something I, I thought would be a little more topical. And it's really aligned to the theme of today, which is Darwinism and evolution and the evolution of the marketer and what the role of the marketer looks like in the future. So if you're disappointed, I'm sorry. You can be angry with me later. Um, but hopefully you will find today's topic interesting. So uh, what I'm going to cover in today's presentation in just 30 minutes is where we are today, what marketing looks like today, where the opportunities are, and I think where marketers really are maybe not doing what they should, and then the kinds of skills that you need to look at in the future as you think about your evolving role, and ultimately where you would like to get to, what does it look like you know, in three years, in four years. So, you know, our favorite Austrian, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And this is the right um, Eingang, guys. Today, marketing is entering an era of big data, of automation. And there is an opportunity for marketers to drive business strategy. What that means, and the reason we have that opportunity, is because we do have that access to the voice of the customer. And actually, our kind sponsors, Harvard Business Review, in the December issue of the Harvard Business Review, had a fantastic article called When Marketing is Strategy. And it talked about the fact that things like optimizing for price and optimizing product and optimizing the cost of creating products quickly become commoditized. There's a limit. You can only make a product so inexpensively. And so where then does business derive value in an environment where quarter after quarter you need to see growth? And this article, which I would really strongly encourage you to take a look at, talked about the fact that the opportunity is for marketing to start to drive business value by going downstream and delivering insight from the voice of the customer. Because marketing has that direct connection, it is right beside the customer that marketing can bring that value into the business. So this is the future. This is the opportunity. A lot of people think about marketing as being just marketing. Um, we actually have an opportunity to drive real business value in ways that were never possible before. And when we think about this, we, we talk about it a lot as going from order taker to business driver, so becoming that strategic partner at the table. So this is our opportunity. And you know, the CMO, um, CMOs really had a short tenure up until fairly recently. They were churned out of businesses very quickly. And that's changing. The tenure of the CMO has grown year after year. Between 2013 and 2012, it grew by three years. And part of the reason for that, Forbes magazine believes, is because of the increasing strategic role of that chief marketing officer. So, we know this already, we've, we've talked about it, this is not a new statistic, but marketers are spending more on technology than ever before, and Gartner analyst Laura McClellan has stated, and this is pretty much taken as fact now, that by 2017, we'll be spending more than CIOs on technology. But part of the problem is that we aren't doing it very well. Uh, we aren't taking responsibility, we are not stepping up to our obligation to the business, we're kind of shying away. Um, these statistics are from a study uh, conducted by ITSMA and Vision Edge Marketing. And this is a risk, right? At this point, marketers are not engaging in quite the same way uh, that they should be. And the risk is even further amplified by the fact that IT is everywhere. Uh, to quote the Wall Street Journal, uh, who, in a, a recent article actually just last year, talked about the difference between the CIO and the CMO and who should own digital strategy ultimately. And the thesis put forward was, in fact, there should be a chief digital officer, and that chief digital officer should report into the CIO or be the CIO um, because IT is everywhere. It is throughout the business. Russell Reynolds, which is a recruiting firm, a large global recruiting firm, 
characterizes the CDO as someone who can oversee the full range of digital strategies and drive change across organizations. And the opportunity here, again, is to um, deliver that business and operational insight in real time. And of course, um, deliver real time insight into performance, which does require heavy computing power and does require technology. So it's not a guarantee. Just because marketers are spending more on technology doesn't mean they're selecting it. It doesn't mean they're uh, recommending it. It's the money's being spent on your behalf, but if you're not fully engaged in the process, you, you risk missing out. So, and here's where, here's where we are losing out. So in July 2013, a survey was conducted of 300 executives, um, and 93% believe that they're losing revenue as a result of inadequate data, and they're actually correct. Another survey was done of 179 companies that looked into which ones used data-driven decision-making and which ones did not, and the ones that did had a 6% increase in productivity that actually could not be explained in any other way. So now that we know it's important, we know that it's something we need to pay attention to, what can you do as marketers? How do you, you know, what do you bring to the table when we look at this blend of art and science? And ultimately, the first and most important thing is storytelling, that everyone can look at the numbers, everyone can count, right? Counting is not a particularly high value activity, but our innate skill set around storytelling and telling stories to the business and on behalf of the business is the real magic here. That's the art part, and no other part of the business has that. You know, lots, lots of people have the science, but very few people have the art. So our opportunity is to take that big data, that combination of social interactions and other online interactions, and if we can build the skills, and if we can purchase the technology, we have the opportunity to process and analyze that data and tell the story to the business about what it means. And what it can look like, we see in certain businesses already, businesses like Amazon. What uh, an author by the name of Bruce Halligan, who wrote, in, um, who wrote in Inc. magazine, he called it the segment of one. It's another catchphrase we've been hearing a lot of lately. So there, there are two ways that you can understand what people want. One is called individual leverage, which is the more I use a website, the more the website comes to understand me. And then group leverage, and that is when many people like me use the site, um, you know, the data that's generated can actually become predictive. So Amazon, you see this in Amazon when you see if you've purchased this, you may also like the following products as well. And we do know as well from companies like Amazon, from that business model, that when you customize that experience, that web experience, you do dr drive higher, higher revenue. When you understand what people want and you give it to them quickly and easily, perhaps not surprisingly, they purchase more. So where else can we see the opportunities? What are, what are the other areas where we can drive business value and save our own money too? Steve McKee, who is an author uh, on Bloomberg Business Week and is also a consultant, I'm always interested in how that works, but uh, he took a look and correlated uh, media spend, web traffic data, customer inquiries, purchase data, and looked at the relationships between them for some of his clients. And through trend tracking, right, not just the, the, the look at the picture that day, but over time, the trend, he was actually able to optimize media spends by almost 10%, simply by looking at the relationships between data and the actions that they caused. So this is what you can do. And when you look at a large global company, 10% on your media spend can be hundreds of millions of dollars. It's absolutely enormous. Another opportunity, and this, this one actually is remarkably simple, uh, Pamplin College in the US took a look at social data and on behalf of an automaker and were able to identify, perhaps not surprisingly, negative sentiment, negative conversations over time were predictive of recall issues. So people complained about their product and eventually it would get into the system through the normal channels and in fact there would be a recall. So this ability to predict negative business outcomes and get in front of them, again, saves significant uh, time and money and is, once again, a way that marketing can deliver business value. And this is one of my favorite stories. Um, this story was really, really huge in North America. Has, has anyone heard the story about how Target knew that the girl was pregnant before her father did? 
Oh, good. I'm okay. So just a few people. So I'm going to tell this story for the first time, and you will all be fascinated. Terrific. Okay. So there was a man, and he received in the mail, direct mail from Target, which is a large、um, American, actually largely retailer, sort of a little bit lower market, but very interesting design. It's a pretty, it's a pretty,、um, it's a pretty fun brand. So received direct mail. Uh, in, at his home, addressed to his daughter, who was 14, and the piece of direct mail was advertising baby gear, and he was furious. Furious. He called Target and said, "How dare you send this to a 14-year-old girl? What is wrong with you? How could you possibly think this was appropriate?" Apologies, apologies, apologies. Well, it turns out his 14-year-old daughter was pregnant. And the reason that Target knew it was because of something called action-based connections. She had taken a number of actions, which predictively, when they looked at the group data, told them that someone was pregnant. And it's things, it's interesting things. It's things like purchase, purchasing certain kinds of body lotion and other sort of non-intuitive purchases. And the reason that Target was able to do that is because they have a massive data science group, behavioral data science group. Which is actually sits in the marketing department, but is staffed by statisticians and behavioral scientists. And the reason that they're able to do this, the reason it started, is because a few marketers came to a statistician and said, "Would we ever be able to predict if someone was pregnant? Would that be possible?" So this is the power of the data of your loyalty card, of your credit card transaction, your store visit, your, si- your visit to the website, all of that data. What it can tell, what you can tell about your customers and what they want and need. So, let's talk about your changing team and the kind of skill sets that you now need to have. We talked a little bit about that just a moment ago, and we talked about Target and the kinds of people they have on staff. So, you're dealing with two different kinds of data. One is structured data, which is things that are easy to put into a database: numbers, dates, very, very simple, simple data. And then we have unstructured. Unstructured data are things like conversations. Um, interactions, very text-heavy, and when we combine them together, that is what is called big data. That actually is the definition of big data. And the challenge with unstructured data and big data is that it can be highly irregular. So you have clumps and bumps and piles of data that don't necessarily have a nice, even correlation, and that's where the skill comes in. The other issue, as well, is if we want to get serious about this, we need to look at it in terms of real time. And you're often dealing with massive quantities of data, and obviously finding the technology that's going to help you process that in real time is a, a big challenge, and will become increasingly so. Gartner has predicted that by next year there will be 4.4 million jobs globally around big da- that require big data skill sets, the ability to deal with big data. As I spoke about earlier, it's things like statisticians,、um, those who can deal with behavioral data. And the the difference between、uh, the reason for the need to deal with behavioral data is that it's really irregular and often contradictory.、Um, so it is a very particular skill set. You're not going to be able to get the intern in there, looking at the interactions and social conversation and correlate meaning out of that. It is、uh, it's science. It truly is science. So. How do we need to deal with this data? What should it look like from a day-to-day perspective?、Um, you know, how much time should you spend on it? What should you be spending your time doing? Well, according to Avinash Kaushik, who's actually、um, Google, Google's global marketing evangelist, so he evangelizes on behalf of their marketing technology. This is how it should look. This is the percentage of time spent. So you should be spending a very little bit of time capturing it, a very little bit of time、uh, reporting on it. And the majority of your time teasing meaning from the data, the analysis part. And I think we probably recognize that this is much more realistic. Right now, this is how most of us spend our time.、Um, ironically, spending a huge amount of time on data capture. There is no data issue. We all have enough. The issue we have is that we have a filter problem. We don't have a data problem. We have a filter problem. And you see that in how, you, how we spend our time now. So where do you want to get to? What do you specifically need to go away and do when you think about taking your marketing group, your business, to the next level? So we should not be abdicating responsibility for our data, or I'm sorry, our technology choices to anyone else in the business. Marketers should specify, recommend, select, purchase, and operate their own technology. It's yours. 
You know, you're not going to say to somebody, I really need a blender to, to blend up these drinks. I'm going to let you choose it. I'm going to give you the fruit. I'm going to let you press all the buttons. It's not realistic. Right? We need to take responsibility and understand that our skill set is changing, that we've typically had a softer skill set, more of a storytelling skill set. We need to get more technical. We also need to understand that we have much more in common with the CIO than perhaps we imagine. Um, Gartner does an annual executive forum, and what they found when they looked at the CIOs who attended was that 50% of them actually had a business background. So they're not all necessarily technical, um, that we do have much more in common than perhaps we thought. And we also um, need to understand that our measurement infrastructure needs to get serious. This is an area of investment. We need to be able to look at real-time data, what the customer is telling us now, and take a look at it as it relates to historical data. So again, it's not counting, it's analysis. And we also need to understand something called the action-based connection. Um, this is coined by Aluk uh, Chowdhury, who is a Kellogg Business School professor. And basically what it is, is when you do something, you typically do something else. So that's the magic behind Target, being able to predict whether someone is pregnant, because if you take these three or four actions, they know because their data set is so big that chances are your next need will be this. You actually get to the point of predictive recommendation. So who's going to help us get there? Who's that person? Who's this magic person that's going to come and save us all? It's something called the marketing technologist. Um, this is a new role. This is a, a blend. This is marketing of the future. If we want to look at the evolution of marketing, where marketing is going, um, it's really to uh, that blend of art and science, the marketing technologist. So Scott Brinker, who uh, has written on this subject fairly extensively, says the marketing technologist, whoops, the marketing technologist is someone who is a hybrid between business and technology. They may have a background in engineering or IT. They are often an early adopter of new technology, but they know the pragmatic realities of actually implementing the technology. So they're not the strategist dreamer. They're someone who really knows what the business needs and how to get it done. And fundamentally, most importantly, they have a deep passion for marketing. So as we think about the future and as we think about the evolution of marketing, um, I strongly encourage you to think, do you, do you have the marketing technologist role in your organization? Is it someone you're ready to hire? Is it someone you know you can hire? Are you ready? Are you ready for what's next? So that's it. Thank you.